Father, as I lift up my voice, contend with my contenders. Whatever entity that is contending with me, as I am here today, contend with my contenders. Contend with my contenders. Contend with my contenders. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fight my battles and give me victory. Fight my battles and give me victory. Fight my battles and give me victory. Say fight my battles and give me victory. Lord give me victory. Lord give me victory. Lord give me victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. May God give you victory. I say, may God give you victory. Amen. May God give you victory. Amen. Over whatever battle you've been fighting in life, may Amen. God give you victory. Yeah. Over whatever enemy that might have lifted and lifted their voice against your life, may God give you victory. Amen. Over whatever enemy that might have raised battles, waves against your life, may God give you victory. Amen. I said, may God give you victory. Amen. The Bible says, he who is born of God overcometh the world. May you appear as an overcomer. Amen. I said, whatever that wanted to overshadow you, may you overcome it. Amen. I said, may you overcome it. Amen. Whatever that wanted to bury you, may you overcome it. Amen. Whatever that enemy wanted to bring over your life, may you overcome. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, I serve a miracle working God. I serve a miracle working God. Somebody say, I serve a miracle working God. I serve a miracle working God. Nothing makes sense until it becomes a revelation. Yes, sir. Nothing makes sense until it becomes a revelation. Amen. I hear, I hear. Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing makes sense until it becomes a revelation. Amen. That is why you realize that when people see you worship, they may not understand why you pray, why you worship. But there is a revelation that you have that makes you to do what you do. Amen. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. So a lot of people might not understand, but the day you find revelation, mm, hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. All right. Look at your neighbor and say, God is good. Look at your neighbor and say, God is good. Look at your neighbor and say, God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Today we are talking about the art of. Can you just make the speaker to look that direction so that. It Hallelujah. Amen. Today we are talking about the art of spiritual warfare. Amen. The art of spiritual warfare. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say the art of spiritual warfare. The art of spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. 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 So as we have been praying, I've been looking on where would I start. Most of the times when it comes to ministering, in as much as I might have a message, I'm not really looking forward to minister because God might take over and things might go the other direction. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when it comes to God, I'm not always in a place where I am rigid to say, this is what I heard when I was praying. Hallelujah. Because you might understand you appear in an environment and there is somebody who God wants to touch in an emergency. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why the Bible says those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Praise God. Amen. I know we are scripture people and someone say, where is it? When you read in Romans chapter number 8. Hallelujah. Amen. Those that are led by the Spirit, which means one has to be led. But for you to be led, someone who is to lead you, it means you need to have an ear to hear them. Amen. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. 
there are two things you need to understand. A leader must have a voice and the one being led must have an ear. A leader must have a voice and the one who is being led must have an ear. And whenever you are in an environment where you are a leader and you don't have a voice, I always say that, I always say that, I always say that <laughs> it is a waste of voice for a musician to sing to a deaf audience. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating with somebody here? So it concerns, as we are speaking about the art of spiritual warfare, that when it comes to your life, you might not, you must not only have the voice, but you must have a revelation that whatever you are to speak to has got to have an ear to listen when you say. You need to come to a place where you grow in dominion. You rise in dominion that your finances will have an ear when you speak. Yes. You need to grow to a place where you have dominion that whatsoever that God has predestined for you develops an ear to hear. Anything that is to be attracted to you, especially your prayers, there is a certain way that, number one, you must, somebody say, read them. In the spirit, there is no haphazard doing. There is a rhythm of the spirit. Am I communicating somebody? Hallelujah. Look at the said there is a rhythm. Look at the said there is a rhythm. What, 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 what makes anything to, to, to be attracted to sound, there has to be a rhythm to the sound. If you have ever been into music before or you have ever seen different kinds of music charts, you realize that music travels in what they call waves. And waves travel in what they call frequency. Am I communicating with somebody? Now, waves, you realize that waves are as what it is called waves. The shape of waves is like waves and the shape of a frequency it is different because it is like lines frequency it depends with how much sound has been produced so where there is more sound the bars go up am I communicating to somebody am I communicating to somebody am I communicating to somebody so a lot of people, you realize that for you to get to a place where you reach to that level, you need to have mastery. You need to have mastery. Somebody say mastery. mastery. You can never be a, a, a principality in a field, in a faculty, in a, 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 an office, a profession you have no mastery over. So no matter how much you might be a believer, if you have not gotten to a place where you master your environment, that when you look at your environment, your environment gets to a place where you control, you have control over it. Sometimes when you get to a place where you pray, it will seem as if your prayers are non-effective. But because you have not yet dominion over your environment, your environment is not obligated to listen to you. In the whole of the world, there is one city that witchcraft has mastered the dimensions of that city. And it's not in Africa. It's a place called London. Where witchcraft has been practiced, has been done, indoctrinated to a place that no matter how spiritual you are, when you get to be in that place, it's not about the noise of your prayer. It's about how much you've mastered spiritual warfare for you to penetrate and break through in that environment. I, am I communicating to somebody? No, I say, it's not in Africa. <laughs> Here in Africa, people have mastered prayer. <laughs> the moment they sense an atmosphere of witchcraft, they know what to do. Hallelujah. We, we are not yet teaching witchcraft in schools here. We are not yet having holidays of witchcraft here. Hallelujah. 
We are not yet putting demons in food. It's not yet common. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to understand that life is spiritual. And everything that has to do with life, there is nothing that is natural about it. Nothing is natural about it. When we were speaking last week, I opened us and I showed us that in as much as Abraham was building a generational inheritance, there were battles that were there. We spoke about the barrenness that was, that was in his lineage. Barrenness was following people all around his lineage. We spoke about the spirit of fear. Many people think, spirit, think fear is just structured. The Bible says, for he has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. And like, I, like what I say, that every spirit needs a conducive environment for it to dwell. Yeah. Am I communicating to somebody? Yeah. So the enemy will make sure that there are things that happen in your life and... Uh, um, in passing, I taught us about what I call the spiritual projects. We will dwell and get more into it. That since you are young, since the time you got born again, there is a project that the enemy set for your life. So some of the things, when you look at your life, you realize that certain battles look so familiar. The reason why they look so familiar is because by the time you are growing up, most of the things that happen in your life that look familiar were not familiar. You getting to a place where you are surrounded by uncles that will be smoking is not familiar. Getting to a place where your uncles are sending you to, to, to their girlfriends with letters is not familiar. It's not something that is strange. But what is happening, there are seeds being planted as you are growing. That there are things that you see as normal when you grow up. That might not be normal. Or that might be the very same thing that the devil knows that this is the thing that will kill him and make him to abort his destiny. The devil has no power, jurisdiction to destroy your destiny. But what the devil does is he makes projects and systems and most of the times, he will make sure he brings necessary demonic materials that will enable you to destroy your own destiny. I can assuredly tell you that 80% of people that destroyed their lives, they did it with their own hands. The devil did not eat the fruit. The devil did not tell Eve to eat the fruit. The devil suggested. Did God say? He did not tell Eve to eat the fruit. He suggested. It was Eve who made the decision. When he came to Jesus, he did not say to Jesus, eat the bread. He says, change stones to bread. And when you read in the previous scripture, what does the Bible say? And Jesus was hungry. And he was coming from a 40 days fasting. So you see that the enemy is very wise. He knows that number one, you are feeling too much power from fasting. You know that you can do anything. Amen. And number two, you are very angry. So change stones to bread. <laughs> if it was this generation, who would have had a camera to say, come, let me, come and see what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to change stones to bread. But the greatest level of power is having it and knowing when to use it and where to use it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. First Samuel chapter number 17. First Samuel chapter number 17 verse 26. First Samuel 17 verse 26. Hallelujah. If you are there, shout, I'm there. Yes, yes. We will not wait for you. In destiny, it's, it is not 10 by 10. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right, verse 26. verse 26. And David spake 
to the men that stood by saying, What shall be done to the men that killed this Philistine and taketh away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistines that ye should defy the armies of the living God? Somebody say the armies of the living God. Somebody say the armies of the living God. One of the things that you begin to realize and see when it comes to life and the spirituality of life is that a lot of people, the reason why you see a lot of people not getting to a place where they're serious with their spiritual life is that they do not understand that there is nothing that happens without a correspondence action from the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We are touching on a story on the base of what happened between David and Goliath. Many people celebrate the victory of David, but they do not understand what was happening when David was fighting Goliath. Reading from where we read, you realize that the Bible tells us that David got to a place when he arrived. The first thing that David would say is, who is this uncircumcised Philistines? Who defiles the armies of God? Every situation a believer is to go through, one of the objectives of the enemy is to try to bring the name of God into reproach. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? The enemy would want to target the life of a believer so that in as much as you are a believer and people point you as a believer, but if your life is not in order, when people look at you, they will not get to a place where they will be attracted to the God that we worship. That is why you realize that many people will laugh at a pastor, will laugh at an intercessor. Why? Because they get to a place where they take your life uh, your, 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 your zeal, your, your prayer life, and they will put your life here. They will put a scale and say, if this is what your God can do, why should we follow your God? So the reason why believers must be so much rugged, the reason why even in, in the midst of believers there must be a, a, a certain level of economic commonwealth even among believers and empowering each other is the understanding that if believers are not empowered, it is to the upper end of the enemy. If the church does not rise to a place where they are, they have dominion over the environment. Remember the foundation of where we started. So no matter how much you might have a voice as a believer and you are declaring, you are shouting, and you are speaking, your environment as a believer might not listen to you. People might not come to the realization or, or your, your words might not have weight as a believer. Only because there are certain aspects of your life that many people look at. That they, might, they might say, but yes, you are a believer, but let your God do this first. In which the measurement of spirituality and grace is not about material things. But the world we live in has set a standard. And what we pray is grace so that when it comes to the children of God, that God might bless you. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that God delights in the prosperity of the righteous. I decree over your life in the name and the blood of Jesus. Amen. May the power of the Lord lift you up and I decree may prosperity be your portion. Amen. I say may the hand of the Lord be upon every aspect of your life and may prosperity be seen in your life in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah somebody. Amen. I said hallelujah somebody. Amen. I said, hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Somebody say, God is with me. Is somebody say, God is with me. Is hallelujah. Amen. When you take your Bibles in verse number 43 of that same scripture, when you take your Bibles, you realize that they were at a place where David is fighting Goliath and they are standing there ready to fight each other. They are ready to fight each other. 
And while they are there, while they are ready to fight each other, the Bible says, Goliath cursed David in the name of his gods. The fight of David and Goliath was not a physical fight. The fight of David and Goliath was a spiritual fight. The fight of Goliath and Israel was a spiritual fight. That is why from the beginning you hear, you hear David declaring and saying, who is it who defiles the armies of our God? Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So a lot of people, in as much as God has raised you, lifted you, there is a leadership anointing over your life. In as much as there is a gifting over your life. But the enemy tries by all means to make us not have dominion spiritually so that our environment will not have, uh, will not give an audience when we command it, when we decree. And this is one of the frustrations of many believers. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? So you realize that you can even come to a place where you are a parent. And in as much as you are trying to, you know, the Bible says, um, train up a child in a way that he should grow, that when he grows, he won't depart from it. And most of the times what the enemy will do, he will make sure that there are, you are in this place where there is no dominion around your environment. We look in the world, even parents are being disarmed. I believe there was a bill that was being set where uh, children will not become the property of the government. Whereby as a parent, you, you, you don't just rebuke a child or discipline a child in any way. And in such a way, you realize that it also in the spirit because whatever happens in the physical, even in the spirit, there is a relation. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. If right now, come, let me show you something. If right now, maybe we are in church, and I will say to her, go and stand there. Right? Amen. And inside her, Something says, no, I won't do it. Right? There might be something that might be pushing it to, to have that, maybe, that, that resistance. Now, okay, God bless you, you can sit down. What will begin to happen is, even if the person who had given here in instruction in the physical before, if that person begin to command in the spiritual even the declaration, if it, is, it, if, it, if it is about something in her life that is to be sorted, that declaration may not have effect over her life. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Because there is a correlation between the spirit and the physical. So if she was not able to listen to maybe Pastor Fortune's voice when she was given an instruction. It will be the same when a declaration is put over her life. I don't know if someone is understanding something here. So that is what is happening to a lot of people. And that is the battle we now have, especially in our times. Battle of dominion over your environment. Praise God. Amen. Praise God, somebody. Amen. Praise God, somebody. Somebody say, battle of dominion over my environment. Battle of dominion over my environment. Hallelujah. 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 When you read your Bible in 1 Samuel chapter number 17, verse 46, David says it this way. David says, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. And I will smite thee. And take thine head and I will give the suckers to the hosts of the Philistines. To the hosts of the what? 
to the hosts of the Philistines and the fowls of the air and the beasts uh, and the wild beasts of the earth and that all the earth will know that there is a God in Israel. Did you see what David is saying here? I'll give your carcasses to the what? To the host of the Philistines. When you are hearing the word hosts, he's talking about the principality and the spirits. David is saying, I will kill you, but after I kill you, I will showcase your body to the host of the Philistines. It was not a physical battle. Whatever we were to see when David was to take a sling, that was a physical action, but there was much happening in the spirit. And David spoke a statement at the end of this scripture. He says, the whole earth will know that there is a God in Israel. We are in a battle of dominion. The battle we are fighting is a battle of dominion. It is a battle of dominion. Where the devil wants to have authority over your environment. And you also have to have authority over environment that your environment might have an ear and audience when you decree and declare. Nothing is as, nothing, nothing is as catastrophic as praying and seeing that as you are praying, you are not, have, you are not having dominion over your environment. Because everything on this earth has a voice and has an ear. Jesus says, you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. What was Jesus saying? That even mountains has ears. And if you can declare, it can come to pass. He says to Peter, go into the, the, go into the deep. Put your net and the Bible says when you put the, 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 the fish, the, the net, fish started running into the net. He was trying to say even resources and every living thing have an ear. It means if there is a believer who has mastered dominion over their environment, the greatest resource you can ever have is having a voice. So every leader must have a voice and those that listen, those that follow must have an ear. So as God has given you authority and a blessing, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion, subdue, and have authority. It means everything around you must have an ear to listen to you. Amen. Your cry after today is God let everything around me have an ear that when I speak, there is a reaction. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Do you know that when we talk about cases, there is a scripture I read in the Bible the, the day when Jacob was blessed and Esau's blessing was taken. What is strange about that portion of scripture is that the Bible says Esau came to the father and do you know that Esau cried and said, do you not even have only one blessing left for me? I once preached on, on, on a message on that scripture. Only one blessing. He was no longer crying about everything else. I only need one. People, people, pe when you read your Bible, especially from the people of the old, you understand how important the blessing is. You understand how important the blessing is. Just the word God bless you, you understand how important it is. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Do you know that when Jacob took the blessing, do you know what the father, do you know what was said to Esau? Do you know what was said to Esau? Genesis 27, verse 40. I want to show you something. Genesis chapter 27, 
verse 14. Praise God. All right. Genesis 27, verse 14. And by the sword thou shalt live. Remember, he's crying for a blessing. Thou shalt live, and thou shalt save thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke off your neck. The father is saying, I have blessed your brother with blessings already. And the blessing of the firstborn shall already operate on this young man, Jacob. But there is a way you can reverse the matter. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? The father is saying, yes, your, 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 your purpose, your blessing was taken by manipulation. But there is a way you can reverse It does not matter what situation you are in. There is a way you can reverse that matter. Amen. The Bible says it shall come to pass when you shall have what? Dominion. Do you know that by the time Jacob came back to Esau, the Bible says Jacob sent sheep and cows in front. When he arrived where Esau was, there is something that Esau said. Esau said to Jacob, I have more than enough. <laughs> the man who was not given a blessing somewhere somewhere in his toiling got hold of dominion and he break the yoke from the brother I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit may God give you dominion in Jesus name may God give you dominion in Jesus name may God give you dominion in Jesus name whatever yoke that was put over your neck whatever yoke that is limiting your life whatever yoke that has been tying your family whatever yoke that has been tying people from where you are coming from by the reason of dominion I decree may the yoke be broken I say may the yoke be broken I say may the yoke be broken In Jesus' name. Amen. So life is very spiritual. You need to understand the art of fighting spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I need dominion. I need dominion. Say, my environment, my environment and everything around me develop a hearing ear that when I declare, you shall respond. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So as a believer, you need to get to that place where you grow. As a believer, you need to get to that place where you ascend. As a believer, you need to get to that place where you grow in the things of the spirit. Now, when you read your Bible, you realize that David understood the aspect of fighting in the spirit. David had gone into a place where he has understood how to master uh, uh, the art of, uh, of spiritual warfare. And he's deep was no longer physical things but he now dependent on spiritual things he now dependent on the power of God that every battle he was to fight it was no longer about his knowledge it was no longer about his weapon he was now fighting with the knowledge of God being on his side Apostle Paul says if God be for us who can be against us if God be for us who can be against us hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you read your Bible in the book of Psalms chapter 125, the Bible says those that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They shall not be moved. Those that trust in the Lord, Psalms 125, those that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They shall not be moved. Say my father and my maker I decree and I declare, I trust in you. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. From my blessing, I shall not be moved. From my 
breakthrough, I shall not be moved. From my faith, I shall not be moved. I shall not be shaken in the name of Jesus. The art of growing that should not be moved. Do you know when Paul was giving his last instruction of spiritual warfare in the book of Ephesians 6, he says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. It is your responsibility to be strong in the Lord. You know, there are certain prayers that people pray. I always look at certain, at, 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 at certain prayer prayer declarations that people will put on, on the morning prayer. And sometimes when I look at them, I'm like, oh Jesus, we still need, we still have a way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh Lord, help me to be strong. I'm like, the prayer point that is being led and what a person is, is, is saying is, are different things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? While these prayer points are being led, someone is coming with their own prayer point on the bottom. They just say, hey, the comment section is on fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, oh Lord, give me ability to read the way. You say, ah, you are the one to take the Bible. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You are... Those that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They shall not be moved. It is a prayer on itself. I trust in you, God. May I not be moved. From the blessing, from my faith, from my trust in you, may I not be moved. This kind of a prayer, it's a prayer that even when you get to a place where th there are people that want to shake you at your workplace, you just take the prayer. You use it as a weapon. Those that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. I shall not be moved. Try to fight a mountain. You will hurt yourself. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? If you read your Bible in the book of Psalms, chapter number 20, verse 7. In Psalms 20, verse 7, David says, Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses, but I trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. I trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. David understood that every war, every battle he was to fight, it was not about him. He understood that every war, every battle he was to fight, it was not his weapons that would give him victory. It was going to be the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Say, God will fight for me. Say, God will fight for me. There is a scripture I love in the book of Exodus, chapter number 15, verse 3. The Bible says, God is, the, is a man of war. Amen. You know, when you get to a place where you begin to understand God as your father and understand God as God, there are certain matters you will know not to waste time. Being a child of God must make you to understand the art of spiritual warfare. There are battles that are given jurisdiction over you that you know that these battles you are fighting. But there are battles that you have to hand them over. Otherwise, you might end up hating yourself fighting certain battles. There are certain battles you are invited to as a trap to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. There are certain battles you are invited to as a battle to what? To destroy you. <laughs> do you know the reason why Apostle Paul speaks and says, do not be hasty in laying hands. You need to descend first. Because there are certain people that will come. I remember... I, I remember while we were being taught about, um, ab about deliverance. So, and every Friday we'll do all night and after prayer, people are being prayed for. Then there was a room where people would be thrown. Pray for people. And one of the things that you'll be warned is the reason why you should be prayerful 
is that if there is a weakness from your family bloodline and the person you are doing deliverance has a demon that is affected the life at that point and you are casting it out. You have to get to a place where you have understood that the reason why you should be fasting and praying that you have spiritual authority. Why? Because it's not only about you saying come out. That's why it's called warfare. You are fighting to deliver a person. So you can never fight a person who is not fighting back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can never fight spirits and they do not what? Fight back. That's why when Jesus was going to Genesarite, the Bible says while he was going there, the spirits knew. Because obviously they discussed that we are going to Genesarite. Hallelujah. The spirits knew. And while they were going to Genesarite, the Bible says there was a storm that rose in the sea. So imagine Jesus being the creator and storms is risen in the sea. And he died. In as much as he has a voice and the sea did not even hear they would have sunk in the sea. I pray, may God give your voice dominion over your finances. May God give your voice dominion over your properties. May God give your voice dominion over your health. May God give yourself dominion over your prayer life. May God give your voice dominion. There is a point God gets to give you authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those that trust in the Lord, they shall not be put to shame. If you read your Bible, you realize that Elijah understood this. Jezebel, he had conquered the whole land of Israel, that all of them were now worshiping Baal. She took over. She was a queen. She made the whole of Israel to worship Baal. And she had taken over even the what? The economy. When Elijah came, Elijah said, today we shall know who is God. Let us go to Mount Carmel. The God whose God shall answer by fire. Praise God. First Kings 18. It says the God whose God shall answer by fire. It was not a battle of the prophets. It was a spiritual battle. It was a spiritual battle. It was a spiritual battle. When you read your Bible in Gideon, in, 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 in Judges chapter number 6, verse 27, when God, imagine when God was to lift Gideon, after a prophecy is released, Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. It did not end there. Imagine a prophetic word that is to affect the life of Gideon. God still says, Gideon, the prophecy has been released. You are a mighty man. But wake up at midnight. Go and destroy the altar of your father. That in as much as you are carrying a prophetic word, Gideon, there is still a spiritual battle to be fought. If the altar of your father is not destroyed, this prophetic word might be fought. This prophetic word might be aborted. And it was in Gideon getting to a place where he began to understand the art of spiritual warfare. That yes, I know I'm carrying greatness. Hear me. I know that the Lord has told me where it's visions. But the reason why I'm fighting is because there is something that has to be dealt with spiritually. If I don't deal with it, there will continuously be delay. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. This is the reason why people rise to spiritual warfare. This is the reason. If he did not destroy that altar, I believe even if he had gone to war, he was going to be defeated. He was going to be defeated. It was not only the altar, the father was the priest of the altar. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, any altar that might be active in your family, 
May God give you strength to destroy it in the name of Jesus. Any altar that might be active in your household, may God give you strength to destroy it in Jesus' name. Any financial altar that has held people's finances, may God give you dominion to overcome it in Jesus' name. Any altar that has been fighting marriages in your household, may God give you authority to overcome it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus comes as the son of God. As a son of God, in John chapter number 1, verse 46, they introduce him and someone says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He is a son of God. But in as much as he is a son of God, someone says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I'm talking about a son of God. They say, if he's born in this place, never. God had to fight for Jesus. That by the time Jesus was born, every maternity ward in Nazareth was full. That he had to be born in Bethlehem. So there has to be an art of spiritual warfare that one has to understand. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I was talking to someone and they were saying, they, they were saying, me, I'm no longer driving my cars back to the village because every time I drive it there, <laughs> it gets broken. There is wisdom that one has to learn when you have to fight spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. There are certain places God will make you to avoid. Not because you are not spiritual, but because you are not yet grown to a capacity that you can deal with it at that age. Yes, at an older age, Jesus can deal with Nazareth. But at birth, you would not have dealt with Nazareth. Because what was going to happen, he was going to be born in Nazareth. And they were going to, that umbilical cord when it's cut, it was going to be put in the land of Nazareth. And that was going to be his downfall. I pray that may God fight for you. I pray that may the Lord give you strength to overcome. Whatever battle you've been facing, I decree and I declare in Jesus' mighty name, may God give you strength. May God give you strength. Like David says, arise, O God, and let your enemies be scattered. I pray, may God arise and fight your battles. May God arise and fight your battles. May God arise and fight your battles. I decree and I declare by the power of the resurrected Christ, whatever yoke that was tying your hands, may that yoke be destroyed in Jesus' name. May that yoke be destroyed in Jesus' name. May that yoke be destroyed in Jesus' name. By the power of the resurrected Christ, I decree and I declare by the power of the resurrected Christ, may God open your eyes to possibilities and to what he has bestowed over your life. May God open Open your eyes to see what is freely given to you in life and destiny. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. May your ears be opened that you may hear him attentively. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare. This week may you prosper and may you see increase. This week may you prosper and may you see increase. Those that rise to fight for you, may the Lord embarrass them in Jesus' name. I say those that rise to fight for you, may God embarrass them in Jesus' name. I say may God embarrass them in Jesus' name. I say may God embarrass them in Jesus' name. I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that whatever trap that was set against your life, may the Lord make you escape the snare of the fowler. May the Lord God make you escape the snare of the fowler. You shall rise. You shall rise. Like an eagle, you shall fly. I decree, you trust in the Lord, you shall not be weary. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. All right, we are going to read this scripture uh, as our declaration of this week. Praise God. Amen. Let us go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter number 20, verse um, 11. Someone can read for us. Jeremiah 20, 
verse 11. 20 verse 11. reads as follows. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. But the Lord is with me. As a dread warrior. As a dread warrior. Not just a warrior. A dread warrior. Uh -huh. Therefore my persecutors will stumble. Therefore my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly ashamed. They will be greatly ashamed. For they will not succeed. For they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor. Their di internal what? Dishonor. Dishonor. Will never be forgotten. Will never be forgotten. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with me like a what? A dread warrior. I pray may God fight for your battles like a warrior. Amen. I say may God fight your financial battles like a warrior. Amen. May God fight your marital battles like a warrior. Amen. May God fight your health battles like a warrior. Amen. May God fight your career battles like a warrior. Amen. Those that persecute you, may they stumble and fall. Amen. And then may they stumble and fall. Amen. Whatever spirit that might be persecuting you, may they stumble and fall. Amen. May they be put to shame. 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 Amen. Scripture says that they will not succeed. Amen. I do not know what the enemy is planning against you. I do not know what the enemy is planning against your family. I do not know what the enemy is planning against your career and your they business. The Bible says they will not succeed. Amen. They will not succeed. Amen. They will not succeed. Amen. I decree you shall rise and succeed. Amen. You shall rise and succeed. Amen. You shall rise and succeed. Amen. Where doors were closed, I command them to open. Amen. I command them to open. Amen. I command them to open. Amen. What they said you cannot do, may it be a prophetic word for you doing it. Amen. I said, may it be a prophetic word for you doing it. Amen. May the Lord give you a supernatural ability to do things that are beyond your natural ability. May God give you supernatural ability to do things that are beyond your natural ability. Amen. There is a prayer that has been boiling in me for some weeks, for, for, some, for, 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 for a week now since we started fasting. What changes a man's life is when God brings people around your life, people that are ready to hold your hand and take you to the next level. Amen. People that are ready to introduce you even to what they do and take you to the next level. Amen. I want you to decree this declaration. God, send me people that will hold my hand and change my life. God send me people send that me to hold my hand and change my life. Father send me people that to hold my hand and change my life. Send me influential people that to hold my hand and change my life. Change me business people that to hold my hand and change my life. Send me great men that to hold my hand and change my life. Send me financial helpers that to hold my hand and change my life. Change me friends that to hold my hand and change my life. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, so shall it be in your life. People that shall come in your life shall be hopeful people. People that shall come in your life shall add value into your life. People that are coming in your life shall come, they shall see your potential and they shall they shall help you grow to a place where you shall see yourself grow. People that are coming into your life shall identify what you carry and they shall make sure you shall operate and manifest your maximum potential. I decree and I declare people that shall come to your life shall not be people that shall see a small potential and compete with you, but they shall be people that they when they shall see your small potential 
potential. They shall announce your name to people that can change your life. I decree and I declare, may God send you people that will announce your name to people that will change your life. May God send you people that will lack you, love you, and they shall announce your name to offices, boardrooms, that your name and your life shall be turned around. May the Lord God, in this week we are entering, may God give you an uncommon favor that where you are not, may your name be mentioned for the good. I said, may your name be mentioned for the good. I decree and I declare, jobs you did not apply, may they be put into your hands. By the power of the Holy Ghost, opportunities you did not seek for, may they come into your hands. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus, the small you have, may God multiply it. The small you have, may God multiply it. May the devourer be rebuked for your sake. May the devourer be rebuked to your sake. I decree and I declare that canker worm, it is bound now. The palma worm, it is bound now. The locust, it is bound now. May the Lord restore everything that was taken from you. May the Lord restore everything that was stolen from you. May the Lord restore whatever the enemy has stolen from you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your name in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May your name be exalted. May your name be glorified. Thank you, mighty God, that may our environment have an ear. May our finances have an ear. Amen. Our properties may they have an ear. Amen. Our potentials and destiny, may our destinies have an ear that when we speak into our destinies, they will hear and respond. Father, we pray that may everything around us develop an ear in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. Amen. That every prayer, every declaration shall not bounce back, but there shall be a response by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank we thank you, mighty God, because not only are we growing in the spirit, but we are growing in dominion. Amen. Mighty God, make us to escape from the snares of the enemy. Make us to escape from the snares of the enemy. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you mighty father because you are God. Mighty God you are sending people that will see our giftings, potentials, talents, capacities and capabilities. And they shall make sure that our lives change. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. May the spirit of excellence that was on Daniel be upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. May the spirit of excellence that dwelt on Daniel be upon us. Amen. Promotions from small potentials. Amen. Profits from small potentials. Amen. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Even in places where we are not favored, may we be promoted. Amen. May we be promoted. Amen. May we be promoted. Amen. May we be promoted. May grace speak for us in Jesus' name. May grace speak for us in Jesus' name. May grace speak for us in Jesus' name. May angels appear. May angels appear. May angels appear. May angels appear and unlock doors that were locked. May angels appear and unlock doors that were locked. Amen. Your Bible says that kings shall come to the shining of your light. Whatever gate kings are supposed to come in from, that was locked. Yes. I command it to be open. Amen. I command it to be open. Amen. I command it to be open. Amen. Your Bible says your sons and daughters shall come from the east, from afar. They shall come with their gold. The gate they are supposed to enter with, that was locked. May it be opened. Amen. I command that door to be opened. Career wise, may that gate and door be opened. Marital wise, may that gate and door be opened. Ministerial wise, may that gate and door be opened. Financial wise, may that gate and door be opened. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because you are God. Testimonies upon testimonies are our portion. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody celebrate God in Jesus' name. Glory to Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you, mighty God. That is, we have spoken your word. May your word be a seed. May it germinate and produce results. And may they eat the fruits of your word and the fruits of their labor. 
Lord, I decree that you are rising each and every individual under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mary God, I pray that in their respective callings, giftings, potentials, talents, workplaces, academical qualification, I pray, mighty God, may they begin to expand and grow like never before. Amen. Mary God, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that limitation has been broken. They are rising beyond whatever limitation that was set. We break the ice. We break the limitation. We break the ice. We break the limitation. Amen. Your Bible says that no eye has seen, no ears heard what the Lord is about to do to them that love him. Lord, I pray in the name and the blood of Jesus. What you are about to do in their lives, no eye has seen. What you are about to do in their lives, no ear has heard. I pray that things they never imagined, life that they never imagined they will live, things they never imagined they will end up, may the door be opened from this moment. May they begin to experience life by grace and life by favor. May they begin to experience life by grace and life by favor. In the name and the blood of Jesus, doors that they never thought in their lives they would enter, places they never thought in their lives they would be, may they be to experience it by grace and by favor by grace and by favor by grace and by favor Amen. in jesus mighty name thank you, thank you mary god that it is beginning now Amen. it is beginning now Amen. it is beginning now Amen. angels on assignment may activities start to happen this moment thank you doors are opening up Activities, angelic activities are happening this moment Amen. now. Mighty God, I pray that whatsoever, whatsoever person in this place who had sleeping angels, I command them to awaken now. All you sleeping angels, awaken now. Awaken now. Awaken now. All you weak angels, receive strength now. Receive strength now. Receive strength now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father.